is the absorption of water. Um, what we shall be measuring in this experiment, you can see the way we measure the amount of water. Wind measure the rest of the so we can't hear you. We are saying that uh, someone has said uh, we have re responded to the question what the potometer is used for. It is used for measuring the rate of transpiration. Uh, that is very true. And the rate of transpiration, transpiration is the loss of water in the form of water vapor from the plant. But you know, experiment, we are not measuring the water which is being evaporated. We are measuring water that is being absorbed. So the assumption for this experiment is being absorbed is the same amount of water that the water being absorbed is assumed to be the same. Although we say it is not, it may not be true because not all the way through the plant will be lost. Some of it be used to manufacture food, for example, and the other processes. Uh, so the 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 to measure the direct measuring water with the ability to indirect the water is being lost from the plant indirect but when you the measure the inspiration. They may compare different conditions, very hot environment and very cool environment, bright sunlight, and when the sunlight is not bright, wind environment and still air. You know, they can compare to find out where you find where you to find out where you, you have a lot of transpiration taking place. Uh, so we discussed this together with the conditions, uh, the assumptions that must be made for this reaction. And we said there are many, there are many different forms of potometers, many different forms of potometers, as you can see. Uh, these are different forms of potometer. The first one is uh, for weighing, uh, but uh, there is one we have discussed. Then these other two, we have not yet discussed them. Like, uh, like this one that I'm showing here on figure 2.4 is another potometer. You can see how it is arranged how this one is arranged. Uh, the capillary tube. Uh, in this case, as water evaporates from the, this capillary tube at the end where the direction, from the direction of air bubble, from the direction of air bubble, at the start of the experiment, it should be put in a container which has water that end where there is a ruler on the capillary tube. Uh, that side of air entering, the air enters at that end. Before the experiment starts, it should be put in a, a container, maybe a, a beaker having water. So if you want the experiment to work, then you remove it from that end and you leave it the way it is right now and you expose it to sunlight. So as water evaporates, you can see the whole apparatus is filled with water. The whole setup is filled with water. Therefore, as, you, as water evaporates, then there is a meniscus that will be trapped. That meniscus now, as water evaporates, you will start measuring it 
you will start the stop clock at the point where the ruler starts from the end of the air enters that end. And so you measure the distance moved by the you cut the meniscus. Then when it is almost reaching the, when it is at the end of the ruler, you stop the stop clock and you open the tap so that it goes back. That, that meniscus should never enter within that flask. Once it enters, then the, the whole setup becomes wrong now. It will continue within the water. Even if you put the, even if you open the tap, some water may go back, but the meniscus will remain. In other words, the bubble will remain within the, within the flask. Uh, so the, the precaution is, we said the meniscus should never go beyond the, the rural, the, the graduated scale. Uh, this upper one, uh, this upper one, uh, the capillary tube, air bubble, if they if they, they can set for you a potometer like this dark one the upper one which is a bit dark and they ask you what do you think makes this a, a very poor potometer how can what would make this potometer not able to measure the rate properly hmm? we looked at the hmm? sorry it has an air bubble trapped it has an air bubble trapped, yes. There is an air bubble, which shouldn't be there. Mm -hmm. What else makes this potometer not work properly? It doesn't have a viola. It has no measuring. Sorry? It doesn't have the ruler used for measuring the rate. Okay, it has no ruler for measuring the distance moved by the meniscus. It has no it has water not, reservoir. It has no water reservoir. It has no it tap. Has, it, has, it has no tap. In other words, no reservoir, no tap. Uh, there is a. And so you can, they can set for you. A such potometer, then they ask you such question. Uh, in other words, you look at the, the setup and see what is required. Okay, so the that is the potometer measuring the rate of transpiration uh, and the precautions. Now we are supposed to continue from here to look at the adaptations of the plants to reduce. If you have got plants that grow in the very hot, that live in a hot environment, or even in our environment when it is very hot, those plants that live in the deserts, that live in the arid areas, how do they minimize the loss of water by the plant? How is the uh, transpiration? Uh, rate reduced. What are the adaptations? Those are what we call adaptations. Which structures are there that enable the plants to reduce the rate of transpiration? Because some of these mm. plants can live in a very hot environment or even in the, in the deserts. Okay, yes, someone had the point? They reduce the size of their leaves to thorns. Yes, some of the some of the plants have leaves reduced to thorns. Well, how does that one help? Uh, when the leaves have been reduced in size, it reduces a number of stomata, reducing the rate of transpiration. This is the size of the leaves to thorns. Okay, if they are used to thorns, they, there is a reduced number of stomata, that is very okay. By growing hair on their leaves. By having hair on their leaves, having hairy leaves. How does that one help? The water traps, the hair traps the air. Um, excuse me, sir. can you please re-explain that point? I didn't really touch that. Um, network was a bit shaky. 
Okay, okay. Reducing the reducing the leaves to thorns, as she has said, it reduces at the end of that it reduces the number of somata. But the the point should have been reducing the surface area. When the leaves have been reduced, when some plants they 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 their leaves are reduced to thorns, then you, there is reduction in surface area over which water evaporation takes place. Also, when there is reduced surface area, it means there is also reduced number of stomata. Okay. Uh, then someone is saying hair, leaves having hairs. How, how does hair affect the rate of transpiration? Hair traps the air that could blow away the water vapor that's already on the leaf there by reducing the rate of transpiration. Yeah, that's very good. Yeah, the hair traps the still air. It, it, it traps water vapor around. If it traps the water vapor around the leaves, then it reduces the rate of transpiration. It traps water. It, the hairs, they trap water, they trap air uh, around the leaf. So if there is water there, because we said for a leaf for transpiration to take place, there shouldn't be leaves on water, on the leaf. There shouldn't be water on the leaves. But if there is water vapor, if there is moist water on the leaf, then it reduces the rate of transpiration. So hairs trap water around the leaf, reducing rate of transpiration. Any other factor? <clears throat> Teacher, the plant shed off the leaves. Hence, reducing okay. the rate. Yes, plants shed off. Some plants, they shed off their leaves so that they reduce the rate of transpiration. Uh, shedding those plants, what do you call those plants that shed off their leaves? Yes, they are called the deciduous plants. Deciduous plants. Okay, any other factor? Some plants have a thick waxy cuticle. Lower epidermis. One with waxy cuticle, can you tell us again? Some plants have a thick waxy cuticle, which prevents water loss through it. Okay. Thick. The, 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 the cuticle is thick. <clears throat> if it is thick, then he, it increases the distance over which water is supposed to evaporate if it is thick. So reduces Excuse the rate me, of water. Mm. What question are we answering? I never quite caught the question. Mm. The adaptations of plants to reduce the rate of transpiration. What structures okay. do plants have that enable them to reduce the rate of transpirations? Um, sir. He's having mm. like a broad leaf, one of them. He's having the a broad it's semi arid area. A broad leaf, no. Having a broad leaf, no. Okay. Because we have so. broad leaf would increase the surface area and they would encourage loss of water. So okay. broad leaf, they have narrow leaves. Hmm? Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, uh huh. There was someone who talk about the rolling of leaves. change in the rhythm of stomata opening. Uh -huh. So that the rhythm becomes what now? Teacher, they close during the day and they open at night when the temperatures are low. That reduces transpiration. That's very good, especially those plants that live in the desert areas, in the, in the arid areas. Okay, uh, that's the other factor. Uh -huh. Another factor, these factors are very many. They can be like 20. Rolling of leaves. Mm -hmm. Any other factor? Yes. Rolling of leaves. Their leaves in extremely hot environment to cut down water loss. Repeat the point again. 
they shed off their leaves in extremely hot environment, cut down water loss. The shedding off, which had already been mentioned, the shedding off. Uh -huh. Another factor? That rolling of leaves, teacher. Sorry? Rolling of leaves to create a atmosphere. Yes, they roll their leaves. Some plants they fold. They fold their leaves. They roll their leaves. So that so they... Is it like the, is it like the touch me not plant? Touch me not all those, yes. But that could be due to a response. It can also be due to a response to very high temperatures. Yes, some, some plants that live in arid areas, in desert areas, in the morning they are open. Even at night they are open. When it becomes very hot, they start rolling their leaves. Including actually these leaves within, within our environment. When it is too hot, it is like they are wilted. We know when the leaf is wilted, it becomes weak and kind of. But they are those plants which have those special features. Once it is hot, for them they roll completely. They fold the leaves completely. So it is an adaptation to reduce the surface area over which transpiration takes place. Okay, any other factor? Thick leaves that store water. Mm, thick leaves that store water. Yes. Some some of the plants. Do you, do you have an example? Any other example that you can think of? The, some plants have thick leaves. Cactus. Sorry? Cactus, yes. Cactus. The cactus, yes, have thick leaves, and even the leaves have been reduced to thorns. Uh, how, about, how about around our environment? How about around our environment? They are very thick. Pardon. Which plants have thick leaves that reduce the rate of transpiration around your environment? Chabroi phylum. Bryophyllum, yes, the bryophyllum leaf. Uh, yes, the aloe vera, yes, aloe, the aloe vera. They are those ones which you have, which look like, like flowers around the homes in those buckets. Some of you, do you have them? They have thorns. They are also part of the aloe vera. It is a, is a group of aloe vera. All those are thick leaves to reduce the rate of, uh, the, it, is a, it is an adaptation for leaves, for plants, to reduce the rate of transpiration. Any other factor? Any other adaptation? Hmm? No. Uh, uh, adaptations of plants reducing the rate of transpiration. Uh, oh, they have less tomato on them. Sorry? Some plants have tomato in this area of transpiration. The network has not a good idea here. I don't know whether you mentioned the few. Did you say few? Sunken tomato. Sunken, sunken, yes. Uh, they have got a sunken stomata. Uh, the, the, the stomata which are in pits deep within the, the leaf. So that uh, there is a, first of all, they trap this stomata now, they will trap air, but also they will, they, they will trap warm, uh, moist air around the stomata if they are sunken. Moist air will be trapped around the stomata so that they do not increase the rate of transpiration. There is reduced rate of transpiration. Uh -huh. Sunken stomata can even be on the stomata, you can have like two or three points. What is which other point? Mm, she had a question. question yes. I was asking that. I was thinking of the uh, hairy leaves, like as they trap the the water, the water vapor on the leaves. Doesn't it like 
suffocate the, the matter or just on the surface? It doesn't it? It is temporary there. It is not permanently there. In any case, after some time, that water that water is evaporates. But it temporarily it is. Order is unmuted. Pardon. The, it does not suffocate the stomata because yeah. it, it is temporal. That process of uh, trapping is temporary because after some time, after a few minutes, it is blown off. It is evaporated, it evaporates after some few minutes, but somehow it, it reduces. And you remember the stomata are many. It is not one, they are very many. Uh, so, but some, each, each of them keeps on trapping. Each of them keeps on trapping. In the process, they reduce, but it is not permanent. They will not suffocate. The entry of air or the of water, it is not permanent. Any other factor? Um, excuse me, sir. I didn't catch that last factor. Please may you repeat it. Sorry. The last factor that you stated. Can you please repeat it? Which one is that? So I never caught it. It was something about stomata. Mm. Uh, we we have said that. Uh, there are, there are a number of factors around the stomata. We have said the sunken stomata. Is it what you are talking about? That is with the stomata within the pits, within the, almost the inside. With, with Excuse me, the leaf, so what is sunken with, stomata? Uh -huh. So it traps uh, water, moist air, traps moist air around the stomata, reducing rate of transpiration. Does it? So what is sunken stomata? What are sunken stomata? Tiny. Okay. Uh, uh, someone else had the question. So how, the, how do plants use stomata to breed? How do they how do they use the stomata to breathe? If mm -hmm. How, what is the question? How do, how do, what is the exact question? How do tomato use their plants to breathe? What are just, air just do diffuse? plants use tomato to breathe? Air just diffuses through. Air just enters, diffusing. The molecules of air are very small. They just enter, they diffuse through stomata. What is the exact question? I'm not getting the exact question okay, you are asking. Like, do plants need to breathe? Or, okay, like, do plants need to carry out? We call it a gaseous exchange. We have not studied this topic. Breathing is the movement of muscles. Breathing in and out. Breathing in and out is what we call breathing. breathing. So plants don't breathe. They carry out what we call gaseous exchange uh, air enters air which has a lot of oxygen enters then then the air which has a lot of carbon dioxide comes out we call it gaseous exchange takes place within the stomata air just diffuses from the atmosphere into the leaf through the stomata so, so what is to, sorry oh yeah. so plants only need to carry out gaseous exchange during photosynthesis or even during photosynthesis, during the photosynthesis, they, we studied the photosynthesis. There are many processes that occur. There is even water absorption. Water doesn't go through the leaf, water goes through the roots. Because what are the requirements for photosynthesis to take place? One of them you have said is, we, we, we know it is carbon dioxide uh, to, what is the requirement? Carbon dioxide, water. What are the sunlight? Sunlight. Trapping of sunlight. 
those are the so all those processes occur. Someone is asking a question. Uh, I don't know where, she, where she's leading me to. To uh huh. Continue asking. So what was what is the question now? I was just confused because, because I didn't understand why plants would need air other than photosynthesis. Oh, why the plants? No, the air contains carbon dioxide, which will be needed for photosynthesis. Air contains carbon dioxide. And of course, they also need oxygen. The air from the air that enters also has oxygen. But these plants also make their oxygen again after photosynthesis. They make oxygen. The initial oxygen that is used comes from the atmosphere. Then the carbon dioxide also from the atmosphere enters the leaf through stomata by diffusion. Diffusion in movement of molecules from region of high concentration. In the air, there is a lot of carbon dioxide enters into the leaf because there is low carbon dioxide concentration. Ha, a lot of biology there. But uh, yes, the leaf carries out to, in other words, maybe you are asking, what are the functions of leaves? No, of the stomata, other than transpiration and and other than trans exchange. Other than inspiration, there is also gaseous exchange. Are there any others? Are there any other processes that occur other than the transpiration on the stomata and the and the gaseous exchange? No. No, any other processes. Excretion, because they don't excrete we. We don't call it excretion. Excretion occurs within the stems themselves. For plants to excrete, you have seen that sap that, that comes out on the, on the stems. Uh, that is excretion. Uh, if they are to excrete the leaves, then the leaves will fall off. First of all, plants don't make very many waste products. So there is no need for excretory organs because the plants take in only the required amount. If it is excess, they stop. So the excretion, no. So gaseous exchange and the, on the stomata, you are talking of the stomata, gaseous exchange and the transpiration. But the leaf itself has the other function, photosynthesis, the leaf itself. This one is making me revise the whole biology. Uh, I don't know that she has been following us, but we are on transpiration. We are still discussing the... Now, someone had asked about what we mean by sunken stomata. Stomata. Uh, that's why uh, the sunken stomata. That's why I'm trying to check through uh, whether we have the structures that show the sunken in nature. I thought the other time you had the... Okay, let's go through one by one. Reduce number, size, and distribution of stomata. Uh, in other words, the one of the adaptation is that some of these plants reduce the number of stomata. Two, they reduce the size. If it was very large, then it becomes small. Uh, then three, distribution. If they are supposed to be on the upper surface, you will only find them on the lower surface. So uh, all those are factors about the stomata. Uh, the uh, next one. Me, sir. Mm. If like in an exam, they ask you to like describe sunken stomata, is it okay to just say sunken stomata, stomata that are like sunken, like sunk? You will simply say that leaves, some plants have leaves with the sunken stomata uh, to reduce the rate of transpiration, just like that. But like, sir, if you were to describe what it was, uh, I can ask you. No one, no one will ask you. Mr. Bagambisa. 
please. Okay, maybe her question is, how do I describe sunken stomata? Nobody's going to ask you to describe sunken stomata. But perhaps um, you need to understand what sunken stomata is, but no one is going to ask you to describe because it is a description itself. Um, sir, so when, when like you look at a leaf and they're like holes, is that like sunken stomata? You, you cannot see them with naked eyes. First of all, stomata, you can't see them with naked eye. Even when they are sunken, you can't see it with naked eye. You must first of all do it on a microscope. These are microscopic structures. You know, these cells, you can't even see them. So even the sunkenness, you will not be able to see. But when you use a, a microscope and you pick a leaf, and you remove the cuticle and you see through, you will see the stomata as if they are within the pit. They are deep inside. So, so, so the holes in leaves are not stomata. Repeat the question, I've not heard. So holes in leaves are not stomata. Mr. Sir. I have... Uh, Please ask the, the question again. I'm asking, the holes um, in leaves are not stomata. The holes in leaves are not stomata. The ones you, you can are see with delicate that. eyes are not the stomata. You can only see with the microscope. Oh, okay. So when Thank you, you find the holes, that is not the stomata. Thank you, sir. Uh, some uh, you mean leaves have holes. Maybe that that is those which are torn. Not all leaves have got holes. Yes, they, those which you see and they are not stomata. You cannot see stomata as the child said. Okay, so we we again looking at at number two structure adjustment in stomata i.e. some plants have sunken stomata, others have hair stomata, which reduce the evaporation. So we can see the stomata, I'm trying to enlarge on mine, uh, the, the stomata, those dark, dark, the brown, brown ones, the brown, brown ones, as if they are within, even in those ones, as if there is a depression, all those are stomata, but they are hidden within the pits inside. And I've said you can only see it using a, a microscope. Uh, hidden within pits, deep within the um, Excuse plant. me, sir. Mm. I have a question, but it's like about plants, but it's not related to stomata. Oh. So, so people have like a brain to send messages to like a body, but like, do plants have a neural system? Hmm. No, plants have a nervous system. Ah. <laughs> okay, first up. It's, it's, it's an interesting question. However, they need to know that the next topic that they are going to learn, maybe in senior three is what you call coordination. And coordination happens both in plants and animals. So plants actually, they have what you call hormones, which control also their coordination. What are they coordinating? Coordinating things like water uptake, you know, coordinating absorption of light, how much water is taken, how much mineral salts are taken in. So they don't have, they, they don't have a brain. Okay. Okay, thank you, sir. What is your name? You are very ask very good questions. What is your name and which stream are you? Sir Paula Kazina. Oh, Paula Kazina. Within which stream? Uh I mean S2S, I think so. S2S. You don't think you must know. So that's very good. You you keep on asking so that we each and everyone can understand. That's very good uh, for so that there is a clarification on these issues. Okay, uh, so the sunken uh, stomata. 
uh, to reduce the rate of uh, transpiration. Okay, the, the other factor, the other adaptation, uh, reduction in leaf structure. Some plants have, some plants leaf are reduced to narrow or thon, thorny or spines structures that reduce the surface area over which transpiration. So now here you can see the cactus. Uh, the cactus where the leaves are reduced to thorns. <coughs> Actually, these are spines. Yeah, you, can. Yeah, you, can. you can't see? Okay, never mind. There's just some, some network problem. Sorry. Okay. Uh, the, the, this plant, which is a cactus, uh, has leaves reduced to thorns. Uh, that reduces the surface area over which uh, transpiration takes place. Uh, that's, then some leaves, we said they, some plants have their leaves, they roll their leaves, they fold their leaves during the, uh, when it is very hot, during bright sunlight, the leaves are folded or rolled up to reduce the rate of transpiration. Uh, rolling of leaves to create humid atmosphere around the stomata in order to reduce the rate of respiration. Is there a question? Uh, yes, excuse me, teacher. Yes, I was uh, asking that doesn't, uh, ask doesn't this uh, affect like the absorption of of light energy, or the chlorophyll, the rolling up of leaves. That doesn't the rolling up of leaves affect uh, the absorption of light energy from the sun since it's covering like the chlorophyll. We we are looking at the you know it is very hot. If it is very very hot, if it is very hot, then plants don't need the too much light. They are trying to reduce, they are trying to make ways of reducing the light penetration because it is very hot. So it will not affect because after all, it is too much. Okay, thank you. Okay. He was asking that he want the rolling of leaves affect the rate of, uh, won't it affect the light absorption? And I was telling her that why even they roll their leaves, it is because the light is already even too much. So they don't need the, again, the more absorption because it is too much. So actually they are trying to reduce light absorption. That's why they roll their leaves. These are now plants that live in very hot conditions in the deserts. Okay, then the next one, possession of it thick is, I have a cuticle. Question. Yes, please ask. So uh, like if, if you say the stomata release um, the, the excess water in the plant, so if you cut a leaf in half, but like you leave it to the tree, you just cut off half of the leaf, and then a certain part of it, like is exposed, is there going to be excess water coming out of the plant? Like more water than that, like a lot of water is going to be coming out of the plant, like more than it needs to release. You know, they, they, they are according to the need. <laughs> Someone is unmuted, we can't hear you. Who is that? Don't want to you. Please speak to the microphone if you're talking to us. You get close to the gadget. It's water. If we want they lose excess water from through leaves. Does it mean that they have, do they absorb excess water? 
No, usually it may not be excess, but you remember there are a number of processes that enable water to come from the, to come from the soil. Uh, the root pressure, the transpiration pool, capillarity, you talked about this cohesion tension forces. So if it is a big tree and you cut the leaf, you cut it, you will see water coming on the stem, oozing out, including a banana plant. If you have a banana plant, once they have cut it, you look at it after some few, some few minutes, you will see water coming up on the stump, on the remaining part of the stem, meaning ah. that the water constantly froze. So, and then mm -hmm. how come when, like, if you like still like take a leaf and it's still on the tree, but then you cut half of it, how come sometimes the leaf doesn't fall off, but like it dries at the ends? Like, is there a cell in like the, in like the leaf that repairs like, like deals with repairing like dead tissue and stuff like that. A student who has got her question, can you rephrase and give and give it to me properly? I'm not getting her question. Yeah, some Any questions you can also type them. them. Huh? If you are saying that is there some like after you cut a leaf and then Save me, I didn't even get her. So I was saying. Okay. So can you hear me? Okay, I'm hearing. Yes. So I was saying, if you take, like, if there's a tree and then you take one leaf on the tree without removing the leaf from the tree and you cut half of it off. And then sometimes the, the leaf just like dries up where you cut it and it doesn't necessarily fall off the tree. And the leaf is still like alive and functioning. So when it's cut off and like it dries, is there a cell in the leaf that, that works on that specific issue that, that works to fix like the leaf? The cells will be exposed. If you cut half of the leaf on a plant, those parts where you have cut, they will be exposed and they will die off and they may repair. If the conditions are good, the plant, the leaf will repair. Just like you can have an injury on your body, on a leg, the cells near where there is an injury on a wound, they will die. There's something that's making noise in your background. It was full out. Maybe uh, it is the network. Sorry, my, sir. My, my, I left my microphone on unmute and I was um, typing, so my keyboard was making noise. Uh, mute, mute. If you cut a leaf halfway, uh, first of all, it will, it will, the cells will be exposed. Those cells which uh, where you have cut the, the leaf, they will, they will be exposed. Uh, some of them will die. Then there will be repair. They, they, they will be healing of that part of the leaf. And then it will, the plant will recover. If it has other leaves, the other leaves will support the plant. It is just equivalent to when you get an injury on a leg and the, the cells on the leg that are exposed, they will die off, but there will be, there will be replacement uh, of the leaves. So repair takes place within the organisms. Okay, I don't know why you, you are asking that. Why were you asking that question? Why were you asking that question? Let me also ask. I uh, said because I'd had the question about um, the loss of water if you cut off half of a leaf. And so I just wondered how if like the plant could fix itself so that it doesn't lose as much water. Oh, at the, temporarily within that day, within a day if you cut the, the, that part, some water will evaporate from those cells. And because of, because of much of evaporation, they will die off, they will die, those cells. But the, the next day or after two days, they will not carry out the function of evaporation. They would have died. And so the evaporation will take on place on the leaf itself, not on the cells that are exposed. Okay, thank okay? you, sir. Uh, the, Yes, please. About the plants to reduce transpiration rate. So is having the, the a reduced number of stomata on the upper 
epidemic matter on the lower epidemic. I, I have not I have not got your network is not clear, but uh, reducing the number of stomata means that if the stomata way, they, if they are very many, they become few. If they be, if they were very many, if they were let's say a thousand, then they can become like if the a plant can have only like two hundred. That is an assumption, yes. That if they were to 1,000, they become like 400. The, the plant will adapt in, a such, a, in a such a way that you will have only 200 tomato instead of 1,000. There we will have reduced the number. But they also reduce, there is also changing the position. These plants will adapt in a such a way that instead of having leaves on the top, they will only have leaves on the lower surface. Uh, the other one is reducing in size. If they were maybe two centimeters wide, then they become like 0 0.5 centimeters wide. All these are assumptions just to, to illustrate what we mean by reducing in size, uh, reduction in the number, and also change in the position. Uh, then... Okay. What of you, you have your mic You're on, talking uh, when you have music in your background. Most of you, you, no. you have the microphones on, so when there's a question, we can't. Okay. Hear. So don't... let's let's have Jovia. Mr. Bagambisa. Yes, Jovia's please. hand is up and also Akelo. Okay, so Jovia and Akelo can be you. I, I don't know how to say this point, but can you yes, talk yes. about to reduce, reduce the interference? Maybe like some plants are. are I speak to the microphone. Be near the microphone. So some plants, their leaves are arranged like in a way that they shield each other, and therefore they reduce the rate of transpiration. Like for example, in your book. The, 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 you are talking of the arrangement of leaves on a plant, which is referred yeah. to as a mosaic. The leaves are arranged in a such a way that at 